Hi everyone, Wendy, Spanish Crafter here. I'm just here today to show you these lovely either paper clips or dangles. I was inspired to make these by Antonio Makes on uh, YouTube. I will link his video below. But you can either put them on bulb pins or paper clips, or I've just made one without anything attached, just then when they're there ready to use when you need them. You can either put them on a paper clip or a bulb pin. So these are a few that I've made. You can match the colours up of the beads to the butterfly or just make it random. Now these were some charms that I've already made a few weeks ago so I just pulled them out but I did make some more last night with some paper beads that I'd made. Can you see those? And these are the paper beads here and they are so easy to make. I used to make these years ago when I was little um, rolling pieces of magazine paper up but not as tiny as this. Like these are probably about a centimetre yeah about a centimetre wide. So first I will show you how to make how I make those and then I will get onto the dangles. So the paper that I use is just any paper you have, any scraps. This was just a piece of yellow paper that I had in my scrap box. And you cut them sort of to a pointy end. And you can make them as big or as small as you wish. So just zigzag along, cutting some out like so you get pieces like that. Now some people might find it easier to do on a quilling tool. I've just wrapped these round a pin or a large needle. And you might not agree with this, but I'm just going to wet it. And sort of roll it backwards and forwards to get it on a curve. And then start rolling. But you want it to keep in the middle so that the narrower bit stays in the middle. It's not all at one end, if you know what I mean. So let me just roll this one up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it is a bit awkward because it's so tiny, but just keep rolling and rolling. Try and keep it as tight as you can. Then once you get near the end, doesn't matter if it goes off centre a little bit because then all your beads will be a different shape. Then you just need a few dabs of glue right to the end. You need to make sure it gets right on the very end tip. And it doesn't matter if it starts squishing out as you get near the end because what I do is go over the whole lot with clear nail varnish. Some I did with um, glossy accents, but I found it was easier doing clear nail varnish because then you've got the brush already in the nail varnish. Okay, is that focusing? So then while it's on the needle, get the nail varnish. This is just a cheap one from the China store, one euro and get a good dollop on and then just go all the way around. This just sort of seals it and make it a bit more hard wearing and then just leave that to dry. So I'll just leave that on the edge of my cutter and here's another one that I did earlier. So while I've got the nail varnish out I'll do that one as well. These are the sort of thing you can do while you're watching TV at night. Or if, like me, your partner's into football, because the Euros are on at the moment. Three matches a day. So I'm getting a lot of crafting done at the moment while he's watching footy. So leave those to dry, and then you end up with... These I made yesterday and I covered some of these, the bronze ones, 
in dried up cosmic shimmer paste and I just spray it with water to revitalize it stick my finger in and um, in fact I'll just show you let me get my box sorry about that right these are my where's the white one it's the gilding polish and mine have dried up so they're not really so what I do is just spray them a few sprays of water get my just rub my finger in it and then just wipe it all over to get the shimmer on I'm so glad I never threw these away when they dried up because I do use them quite a lot um, I make lovely papers with them as well so leave that one to dry and then obviously wipe your finger so that's how I do those then for the butterflies I printed out a sheet of these are from Kelly Kelly Watson Crafts it's on a Facebook group journaling with junk and digi kits and these are from Artie Mays so I shrunk them down they should be a full A size sheet each one so I shrunk them down four to a page then I cut them out and you end up with pieces like this so then I just glue two together back to back smudge the glue so that it goes right to the edges make sure the wings are facing the same way and you don't have one upside down and it doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same because you can just trim them down then you don't have any white edges I just rub round with black um, these are eyes ink inks pigment inks and it just stays usable on my dauber for ages just daub them round in black so that's easy enough then I use my copper dial and use the smallest hole and it's up to you where you have it in the top corner, bottom corner, on the side. Just punch a hole. And get a brad. I shall use a gold one. The correct end on your cropper dial. squeeze that one shut and then you can attach your dangle I'll show you some that I made last night bear with me Let's just get those out of the way this is my working tray that I had last night and these are ones I made so you can check them out and use blue to coincide with the blue on the butterfly or just make it random and then these instead of using a jump ring I I'm not sure what you call these but there's a couple of rounds of them if you know what I mean they are a bit awkward to get on but I feel that they're more secure Bear with me while I try to squeeze that over there. It is very awkward. Oh, I forgot to tell you the other thing that I do. Just bear with me one moment. I wipe over all of them with um, glossy accents. And the way I do that is with a little narrow paintbrush or my finger. And I can't find my paintbrush. It's probably by the sink, so I've just washed it. And 
this always gets blocked up. Oh, there's a lump of it now. Dub that on with your finger. Let one side dry and then do the other. Should really do this before I put the grommet on. And try and get the edges as well, then it'll seal the edges. So let that dry, then turn it over and do the other side. So I'll just leave that on one side to dry. I did do some with a gel medium, which I didn't think looked quite as good. This is the gel medium I used, Daily Art, and they're not quite as shiny. Let me just stand up and make sure you can see those. See, that's not quite, let me get that in focus, not quite as shiny as this one. See the light catching that? So I think I prefer the um, the glossy accent. So I'll just try and attach a pin to this one. It would be easier with just a plain jump ring. You have to prise it apart get the grommet over it and then once you've got it into the hole it is a bit easier to feed through so with a pair of pliers just feed it slowly through the hole if you've used these rings before you'll know what I mean and if you don't have any you could like I say easily use a jump ring these grommets are quite old and the paint's coming off them, so I'm just going to scratch all that white off there. So that's another one done, and you can attach that to a paper clip or a bulb pin, and you've got a lovely embellishment for your journals there. Or you could attach it to the side of a belly band. which is what I like doing sometimes. When you're making your belly bands, if you put a loop of ribbon on the side, then that would just attach onto there and hang off the side. Obviously that doesn't coordinate with that paper, but okay, I will see you next time. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. See you later, bye.